I'm Rebecca Lewington. Welcome to If Memory Serves, the Micron Technology Podcast. My guest, Naomi Ayoto, was nominated last year by the Global Semiconductor Alliance's Rising Women of Influence Award. She's highly visible and well-respected in the industry as the only woman technology leader from Japan, heading a large semiconductor process technology development team. She's also a champion for women in both her personal and professional lives. I wanted to ask her about her remarkable ongoing journey and what advice she might have for those who want to follow her path. ayoto san thanks very much for joining me. Thank you, Rebecca. You're very welcome. So first, tell us a bit about yourself. What's your background and what's your current role? My major was material science and I started my career as a researcher of silicon surface reactions. Next, I came to be a process development engineer. Then I led DRAM process development for more than 10 years. My current role is mainly connecting university students to semiconductor industry to attract talented students to this industry. I give lectures to students and arrange lecture series as Micron team. We reached over 4,000 students through almost 100 opportunities in three years. It's the role of the ambassador of our industry to fascinate students to our technologies and further growth in the future. It is indeed a fascinating industry that we're in. So tell me some more about how you went from being a pure technologist to being in the role of technology development. How did that happen and why did you want to do it? I also worked for Technology Alignment in Micron. The reason is Micron is developing technologies at global sites. For such a company, technology alignment is very important. We unify development strategy and align actions to maximize the effectiveness of parallel development. I took the role of technology alignment after my assignment in US, Boise, Idaho, then came back to Japan. My previous company in Japan was acquired by Micron, and before that, I was leading process development. In Micron, I was assigned to the same role in US. So I knew the differences of technology between both teams, and I knew the importance of technology alignment and people collaboration to make things go ahead. We needed to overcome physical distances and gaps of cultures and ideas. I took the mission of accelerating alignment and collaboration because I was the best person to do that with my experiences. That's really interesting. So what's your proudest achievement from your technologist role? I know you have your name on more than 20 patents. Thank you. In my career uh, as, a, as an engineer of cleaning processes, I developed wet and dry cleaning processes for ultra-fine structures for high-end devices and achieved innovations. I'm proud of them. But the most important achievement is the DRAM technology alignment in my country. We joined technology strengths to get back the leader, leading edge, leadership of DRAM technology in the world. This is my proudest achievement from technology perspective. And it is something to be proud of indeed. Um, so when you have to bridge different cultures across great distances, what have you found helps to bring those teams together? When I bridge different cultures and technologies, of course, there are difficulties. To overcome the gaps, among cultures, we need to try to understand the background of thoughts each other. Through my experiences, I got a general way, way to achieve the sincere collaboration, not sufficient, sincere collaboration among different and diverse ideas and cultures. I think there are four keys to understand counterparts. First, empathy. Let's emphasize with our counterparts and try to understand why they consider so and feel so. Next, respect. Let's respect their ideas and reasons, then accept their way and thinking. Finally, we can reach inclusion through this approach. This is what I learned through my experiences. I really like that. Empathy, respect, accept, and inclusion. I think I'll try that, do that in my own work. So how did you go from being a technologist still, uh, although an alignment role, to being a mentor and ambassador for university students? How did that happen? And why did you want to do that? 
I accepted the role of the ambassador for universities because it is another way for me to connect people, connecting university students to the people in semiconductor industry. Unfortunately, in Japan, semiconductor industry didn't look so attractive to university students. They were misunderstanding that semiconductor industry is declining. It was necessary to correct such misunderstanding and send the message that semiconductor technology and industry are keep developing and the necessity is increasing. We have the great future with AI, new generation networking, computing, and all future technologies beyond. All of them need semiconductor. I thought I can send the correct message information to attract university students. So when you when you speak to students considering careers in semiconductors, what do you tell them? When I talk to students, first I show them how semiconductor industry has been growing. 10 times revenue increase in the past 30 years and it is keep developing. There is a great future and how attractive here is as their working place. Next, I tell them about what the meaning is of working in manufacturing industry. We design and produce the solutions and send them to society. My company, Micron, produces memory solutions, which lead our world to evolve with various technologies which need memories. Our products, memories, are the contact between our side manufacturer to society. Through the contact, through our products, memories, we can contribute to society and world to step up to the next stage and we can make people happier. So we can proud of our products, memory solutions. I tell students, be proud of your products when you work in manufacturing industry because you can, you proud, your products must contribute to society and people, no matter what products you work for. Of course, I hope you choose our industry, semiconductor, as your place to work actively. That's a great message, ayoto san So how did you come to think that way? When my daughter was seven years old, she asked me, mom, why are you working? She didn't know there are mothers who stay at home because she had been, she had been in nursery school in daytime until she entered an elementary school. So she simply asked me why I was working. It was a good chance for me to clarify my idea. I answered, uh, there are three reasons. At first, we need to buy food and clothes, me for life. Secondly, I like working. It's a pleasure to achieve my targets. Thirdly, I can help others. I can make them happy. Me, I can contribute to people and to our society through my job. I said to my daughter, the most important reason is the third one. This is my story when I could clarify my thinking. That's a really great story. Thank you very much for that. Now, if someone isn't sure whether they want to develop hardware or software, do you have any advice to help them choose? Hardware or software, silicon chips or systems, there are many choices. But whatever you choose, all of them, all of them are important and contribute to the world of the future, future world. So don't worry about the significance. Just consider what you are most interested in. What's the most important, most exciting for you? But let me add another advice. Don't stop considering what you really want to do at this moment. Targets of your life may change with time. That's natural. So stare at yourself and keep considering what you want to do now. Let me tell you my case. When I was in my teens and twenties, I dreamed to be a researcher of physics. When I started my career, I was doing fundamental research and uh, doing researches for uh, surface reactions and submitted papers to journals and conferences. However, my results weren't implemented in the products of my company. I asked myself, what's the meaning of working in this company and industry? In my studies, I switched my job from fundamental research to process development, 
closer to the products. Then I found the pressure to get my results to be implemented in the products. In such a way, stay at yourself and keep considering what you want to do. Then you can find in which area you want to pursue in your career. Find your solution and open your way to the next step. That's my advice. Stare at yourself is a great piece of advice. Thank you for that. Now, when you're mentoring women as part of Micron's diversity, equality and inclusion efforts, what advice do you give them? When I'm mentoring women, I say that Micron's culture, diversity, equality and inclusion supports us. Under this favorable, favorable circumstance, we can develop ourselves. It's a chance for us. It's a chance to train and develop ourselves for higher capabilities. And also we can show our performances in our engineering roles by solving issues, innovations, and designing the solutions. The DEI culture supports us to work more actively and positively. Don't hesitate, let's move forward. Indeed, and along those lines, have you experienced any barriers that you had to overcome as a woman technologist? In my career over 30 years in semiconductor, in fact, I didn't experience any barriers due to a woman. All of my barriers came from technology, engineering, or economy among the industry. I knew, I know I was lucky, as all my supervisors supported me, and my husband and children have been supportive every time. However, of course I know there are various circumstances. Let me give an advice to overcome barriers. Keep your strong will to develop yourself. Keep your targets with passion. If you have obstacles, ask people surrounding you for their help. Don't hesitate, then you can get the support. I think that's the way I have been doing. I kept my intention and people surrounding me helped me to break barriers when I asked them for their help. I hope many women engineers can do so. I'd like to say, I will help you. Let's move forward together. Yes, indeed, let's move forward together. So tell me, Ayota-san, what does the GSA nomination mean to you? The GSA, GSA nomination means a lot to me. It's a great honor of me that my career and role are recognized. This honor helps me to fascinate students, especially women, with semiconductor technology, engineering, and our industry. That's great. So just to finish off, what's next for you? I'm now opening new contacts between university students in Asia and us. This is my mission, to ensure the growth of semiconductor industry with the highest talents of coming generation in Asia and over the world. Ayata-san, thanks so much for doing this. It's been very inspiring. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much.